Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Band of Brothers Ghost Panzer. This is the deluxe edition. This is the, basically the third edition of Ghost Panzer. Um, all the all the uh, games in the Go in the Band of Brothers series have been brought up to this deluxe edition uh, packaging. Uh, there was the first edition, obviously, and then there was the remastered edition, which came out several years ago, and, and we did unboxings of those um, after the, the successful Kickstarter, and now we're going to crack into the deluxe edition to see what's different. Uh, we do have a video on the, uh, was technically the third game of the series, um, uh, with the old breed, which was a Pacific, uh, theater. Um, which kind of highlighted some of the deluxe edition features, so we'll see what carried over into the new editions of the original games. Alright, so Ghost Panzer is the second in the series, the first of course being um, Screaming Eagles, um, and then Ghost Panzer. Texas Arrows came out, which was an expansion for both games. It had six scenarios for one, six scenarios for the other. So you needed both to play play all the scenarios. Uh, and then there was a battle pack, which came out, and then there's some other expansions, some some uh, some upgrades, and then the old breed came out, which is actually the third uh, standalone game in the series. So it's very heavy. So we start out, and we have our scenario booklets. And you see this is uh, listed as version 2.2 in the uh, right there in the uh, in the scenario. So we start out with some training scenarios. This is on glossy paper. Uh, it is not page numbered, so it's probably about 16 pages. Uh, so it starts out with the infantry training scenario, and then we go right into another. Panzer training scenario, so you can learn how to use uh, armored fighting vehicles. And then we go straight into scenario 19, because I believe the first game had 18 scenarios. So on each one, you get a little chart that shows you the turn, who has the initiative, I believe, um, and then which, uh, which units are going to come in and where they're going to come in for both sides. Now this is, uh, Ghost Panzer is an Eastern Front game. Uh, taking place between uh, Russia and Germany. So this does have, so you've got the bloody triangle, take Dubno or be shot, our goose is cooked, hill 251, and then going on, we have, let's see, we end up at scenario 32. So I thought there were 16, so we had 16, maybe there's some like, uh, bonus scenarios, because we start here with 19. Anyway, you got your scenario book. Then we've got the version 2.2 rules right here, also on glossy, and this is 36 pages. And this is larger print, a lot more, it looks like it has a lot more graphic uh, examples than it may have used to, going from memory here. But the print definitely seems a little bit larger than before. They fleshed it out a little and made it, made it more pages and spread things out. So, and the rules only take you through page nine. It says stop the main rules above plus any needed terrain rules are all you need to play the first training scenario. So then you'll play that one and then you'll come back and read some more rules from there. But it's nice you can just read about eight or nine pages to get into the into the start of the game. Then we go into guns and vehicles. Artillery support. Terrain. Go with graphic examples of like how hedgerows work here. So it's not dense. You see a lot of white space here, big big print. So that's very nice. They have definitely improved the rule set at least. And then we've actually got an extended example of play here. And the rules cover, because these are the same rules you're going to find in um, the old breed, 
which takes place, like I said, in the Pacific. So that's why it's got some notes here on the on Japanese counters and units in this. So this is the same rule book you're going to get in all of them. So there's your rule book, scenario book, and then we got our 2.2 .2 reference card. And there are two of those. One for each player, unless you're true soloing, playing both sides, then you only need one. But this gives you the uh, player aid card, gives you all the procedures for various actions you'll take, artillery, melee, firepower, infantry versus guns, versus vehicles. And then you got your terrain chart here with all your with all your notes as to as the movement costs and penalties in various situations. Concealed, adjacent, moving in open ground, hindering terrain. So you get two copies of the reference card. Now we've got our counters. So one thing that's nice now in the deluxe version is that we have pre-rounded counters. So they used to come in strips and you'd take them apart and you'd round the corners with an organ laminations 2.5 millimeter deluxe quarter rounder. But now you don't need to because these just pop out directly and already are pre-rounded. And so that is a very nice feature for the deluxe version of the game. So we'll take a look at counter sheet one. That's your Germans. You got weapons teams, infantry, vehicles, tanks. Got some airplanes here, some junkers, which tanks. And then we got counter sheet two, which is you see German, and then the red, bright red is Russian counters. And then three is all Russian. And four is mostly blank. Make your own counters. But then we do have some Russians, and then we do have our uh, entrenchments. You got your foxholes. Oop, the blank ones just want to punch out too. Everything wants to come out very cleanly, very cool, easily. It's very nice. Everything wants to punch. So you get your concealments for both sides. And on the back is foxholes. And some artillery fire for the Soviets. All right, so those are the counters, or excuse me, the, the, the units, and now we've got some status counters. These also are pre-rounded. So you have your op fire and used, so if you mark a unit for op fire, if it, instead of taking an action, you can flag them as op fire, and then you put one of these counters on them, and when they take their opportunity fire, you flip it over, it's used. So then we have our move, used, Suppression, one of the, it's one of the key elements of the Band of Brothers series is, is working with suppression of units. So the, uh, your units will try to suppress the other units so you can move up on them. It's not, it's not just a run and gun kind of heroics. So we're going to need suppression markers. We've got smoke, illumination, unconfirmed kill, sustained fire, one through six, got two sets of those. Got all buildings stone. I guess it's a marker to let you know that all the buildings on the on the map are going to be stone. Command points, flank indicators, and then you got some notes here for like terrain. They're not overlays, but they indicate that you got orchards and woods, mines, no hills, half hexes not in place. So some it's nice. This is new. They've they've added some little reminder markers when the scenario dictates you can put those put those on the map to remind you of something and these just want to punch out two all right so now we got our game maps and these have really been upgraded these are on very very they're mounted boards but they're not you know double-sided so they're geomorphic so the boards can go together to form you know a single map and then they will in many different directions, but they are very firm. Mounted, you know, mounted chipboard, very thick. A lot of good quality here, so. This is board 11, again, counting started in uh, Screaming Eagles. 
So here's map 11. And they're double sided, so you got some hills here. They're very neat. I like the 3D design. This is actually backwards here. So let's see. Flips. So when you flip it, you flip it that way. There you go. There's your numbers. So that's 16 and 11. And here's map 12. Some craters. Very good artwork here. Goes to 17. So like this looks like a stone building, but I would assume that there's some wooden buildings and it's just gonna be like all these are stone because the terrain will be different. So there's 13, you got a road going around a field or a hill. And then here we've got a little town. And 14. Crossroads. And a hill with a road going around it. A few houses or buildings. And number 15. Another town, number 20. And number 21. And forest or woods. Woods. And the last map, 22. That one was 20 and 23. This is 22, probably 21. On the reverse. Nope, 24. Big wooded area. All right, so you get, uh, what have we got here? Looks like uh, seven mounted boards, double sided. All right, and then you got one of uh, Worthington's nice trays to store your counters. These are definitely an improvement from the the remastered edition, which had a big, this was, that was their first foray into including trays, and there was a big blue, big blue tray with a lot of slots and big open areas, and didn't seem to make a lot of sense, but this does. You got little slots here for your counters, your dice, miscellaneous tokens can go in here, so you can put your Germans on one side and your Russians on the other, and then two dice, nine to four black ones and that is that so if you pick up a copy of the deluxe edition of ghost panzer in the band of brothers series you're going to get that very nice tray two dice seven mounted double-sided game maps one sheet of about three quarter inch tokens counters four sheets, essentially three and a half sheets worth of units for both Soviet and German, two player reference cards, version 2.2, .2. one set of rules, 36 page rule book for version 2.2, .2. and your scenario book that includes, what do we say, 32, 19 to 32 is 14 scenarios, 12, yeah, 14 scenarios. And that is everything in the deluxe edition of Band of Brothers Ghost Panzer from Worthington Publishing. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!